Greetings YouTube, this is New Age Classic Gamer here, welcoming you to my first ever Let's Play. And what better way to start Let's Playing than by playing Classic. This is Super Mario Bros., originally released on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or Famicom, depending where you're from, in 1985. However, what you're seeing here is a port to the Super Nintendo from 1991. This game not only included Super Mario Bros., but Super Mario Bros. 2, Lost Levels, and 3 in one complete collection called Super Mario All-Stars, as you saw earlier, and gave each game enhanced graphics and sound. It's one of my favorite collections of all time because it's got some of the greatest games of all time on it. Now, anyway, the whole point of this game is to get the end of each level and at the end of the game to save Princess Peach from the clutches of Bowser. This game takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom and it has full of pipes, enemies, and power-ups. What you're seeing here is a little bonus area, which this game is full of. If you find the right pipe, you usually go down in a bonus area full of coins and points. Well, coins are the points, but anyway. Now, when you hit the flagpole, you end the level and you go on these little castles, which take you to the next level. You have a time limit you see in the corner of the screen, and if you finish the level short, um, short enough time, you get extra points for having so much time left. If you get lucky, and I know there's a certain way of this, I can't remember right now, but you can get fireworks to appear, which give you even more points. Now, this level 1 tune is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. Mainly because of the little pipe entrance, which made you think, oh, this is something special right here, which it really isn't. But, um, anyway, that, that's the Fire Flower. This gives you not only the ability to take an extra hit without dying, but throws fireballs at enemies, which completely destroys them. There are two other power-ups in the game, the Super Mushroom, which simply lets you take another hit, and the Invincibility, which makes you a seizure that can kill anything on screen. Now, what you're seeing right now is the collection of coins, which this game is full of. If you get 100 coins, you get an extra life, and these extra lives can really help you out later in the game when the levels get a lot more tricky than this. Now, this level probably has one of the most famous secrets in the entire game, which is, if you get up high enough near the elevator toward the end, you can completely skip worlds th 2 and 3 if you want to, to level world 4. There's also pipes which take you to worlds 2 and 3, but that won't be showing that right here. Now, what I'm showing off here is the ability of Piranha Plants. If you stand right next to them, they won't pop up out of there, which makes it easy to perform jumps over the pipes. Now, this is where it ends off. If you walk towards that right and fall down in that pit, there's three different pipes. One to World 2, one to World 3, and one to World 4. If you're good enough, you can go to World 4's um, secret entrance, which I'll show when I get there, and completely skip the entire game to World 8, and you can beat it in possibly five minutes if you're good enough. I take about an hour here, but that's because I want to show off every level, because I don't want to just, you know, skip and have people miss out on what this game's all about. Now, World 1-3 here is one of the um, little jump platforms in the sky. And it shows off the um, flying paracoupas, which can go up and down or left and right. And I don't think I've introduced the enemies to you yet. You have usually four different types of enemies. You have the Goombas, which are the brown enemies right there. The paracoupas, which are flying up and down right there. The standard Koopa, which is right there. There are two different types of the Koopa, however. The red and the green. If the red walks from the ledge and walks back... The green just walks off the edge completely because, apparently, they don't know how to stop. And this is the end of World 1-3, leading into the castle level, which ends each world off. The castle level, you face a fake Bowser, that is until 8-4, but we'll get there when we get there. And the whole point is to chop, hit a little axe, which causes the drawbridge to fall along with Bowser with it, while the Bowser clone. These levels are full of lava and um, fire ropes, which are very irritating near the end because they spam them all over the place. Right here, though, it's pretty easy. You just jump over that, and you see, when you get closer, Bowser starts to throw fireballs at you. All you have to do is jump over him, and he's dead. Yep, that's all there is to it. Oh, wait, we've beaten the game already? That was crazy. Oh, that's disappointing. Yes, at the end of each world, until World 8, you're greeted with a toad that says, Sorry, our princess is in another castle, which is probably one of the most famous lines in the entire game. And one of the most irritating. Now... We're coming up to one of the most famous levels in the game, which has some of the most memorable music in the game, World 2-2, which is one of the few Underworld levels in the game. I want to say there's three, including the final, but I don't know. Anyway, this is one of the abilities of Koopas. If you step on them, all they do is leave their shell behind. You can kick that to kill other enemies, but however, it can bounce back and hit you too. Now here we go, this is Starman. See? Running Seizure. You can kill any enemy by just touching it, and which shows the enemies how painful touch damage can really be. I also really like the music for this just because it's just so awesome. There doesn't need to be another reason. Now right here is one of these little springs that jumps you up. Those can be either really fun to use or really annoying depending on who you talk to. 
Anyway, here comes. This is World 2-2, which I personally don't really like. Oh, fireworks. Forgot to mention that. That's the fireworks that happens if... I know there's a specific way to do it. I know it. I just cannot remember the time. I'll probably have an annotation right now. Anyway, World 2-2. I do not like this level very much. It is a very slow-paced level, and these enemies can be very irritating if you don't have a fire flower. I was fortunate enough to have one, but... I, it's just such a slow paced level in my opinion, I don't like it. I can understand why people like it, don't get me wrong. And then these little vortex down here that actually suck you, you can't really see it, but they will suck you down. And that's what happens when you get hit in this game. You get are invincible for a short amount of time, and you turn little. If you get hit again in this state, you're dead. You have, I believe, five lives to start with, maybe six. I'll probably put an intention if I screw this up, but um... Anyway, there is two types of cheap cheeps, which is what those fish enemies are called. You have the blue ones and the red ones. I mean, green ones and the red ones, rather. The green ones just go in a straight line, the red ones move up and down a little bit. There's also bloopers, which are pink in this game for some reason when they're normally white. Those are little octopus enemies that can shoot ink in, like, you know, the Mario Kart games, all that. Anyway, that's the end of this level. I don't think I mentioned the music in this game, but it is some of the most memorable of all time. I don't know a single person who hasn't heard at least the Overworld 1-1 theme. Hey, look at that, fireworks again. Oh gosh, this level. <laughs> this level right here, I this is one of the few levels I really hate in this game. Just because you don't know where the fish are going to jump up from. It's completely random. And, see here, I try to go for this power-up and, oh, looks like that. The fish got me and I died. Yeah, that's why I don't like it. It can be incredibly cheap at times. Heh, <laughs> cheap. Get it? Cheap, cheap. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, it's so hard. Some of these platforms in the end get really small, seem to be really precise, and then there's fish jumping after you. It is just really, really irritating. But I make it through in this sh um, shot, so it's alright. I really like the little um, totem poles in the background with the Goombas on them. I thought that was a nice little touch. That wasn't in the original game, that was only in this port. I don't know, I just thought it was a neat little touch. And, yeah, that was the end of that level. Not one of my favorites. I gotta say that, I really just hate those random enemies just coming up out of nowhere, and you don't know where they're coming from. It's not like a set pattern, you know, they go from specific places, excuse me, and, no, they just go from whatever. Anyway, this is Castle 2-4, which introduces this little, the little jumping fireballs. I'm sorry, I'm really tying my words here. And this little slow-moving part, we have to be careful not to get hit. Oh, and then there's little elevators right here. You gotta be careful on two. Otherwise, that happens. Because the fireball just came out and got me. Anyway. This is the second world's bo boss, which is again Bowser. It's Bowser in every single time. If you don't have a power-up or the ability to jump over, just run underneath him when he's jumping up. That's the easiest way to take care of him. And wait, wait, did we get him? Did we get him? Did we get Prince Speech? Oh, two toads. It's okay, though. It's okay. We'll get our revenge on these toads. Ten years later. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, this world introduces us to the new enemy, the Hammer Brothers, which are incredibly annoying. These are my least favorite enemies in the entire game. Koopas? Yeah, they're pretty easy. Goombas? Oh, they're nothing. Even Chum. The little piranha plants, those aren't so bad either. Right here, I'm trying to find a secret. I found it right here. This is another one of the bonus areas like I talked about earlier. That if you can find the right pipe, you can go down and get some free coins. However, I screw up here and I don't believe I get them all. I try to, but I fail miserably. Yeah, I get stuck over there and then I can't get that last coin down there. I try for it, but I can't get it. Oh, looks like that. I got it. <laughs> Proves how much I looked over this. Um, anyway... <laughs> bunch of Goombas right here. I thought it was a nice little touch of the water right there. I believe if you fall in that water, you die. It's not like the normal water in World 2-2. And here we're introduced to the annoying, annoying, annoying Hammer Brothers. You can only kill them from underneath unless you're really lucky and jump on their heads. But that usually doesn't happen because they're throwing hammers at you almost all the time. Right here I try to show off a little secret, but I failed this a lot of times when I first played through this. But this is another little bonus area. Yeah, two bonus areas in one um, level. This one I really like because it's in the sky and you have to jump in this little cloud which is constantly moving. So you gotta try to be careful and get all the coins without falling off. I miss a couple here and there, but in the end it doesn't matter. Because it's just a fun little bonus area. That little bonus um, with the Mario in the background wasn't in the original game. That was added in, in this remake. 
And when you fall off at the end, the cloud stops and you're back to the end of the level. Well, not the end end, but, you know. And I forgot to mention this. There's these coin blocks in each of the levels, some of the levels, that if you keep hitting it, it keeps spitting out coins for a while. And here I tried to show off the World 3 1-Up one, one trick, which is pretty famous. If you keep jumping on that turtle, it gives you infinite points to the point you just keep getting 1-Up after 1-Up after 1-Up, but I failed to do that because I'm a terrible player like that. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the end of World 3 1. On to 3-2. Yeah, you gotta be really careful when you're little Mario, otherwise you will get hit. And, oh. I, pff, sorry, I keep um, cutting myself off, but if you throw that Koopa, you can keep... Hitting the enemies until I get point of one up. I'll try to show it off again here, but it, I realized that it wasn't there. Anyway, Starman time. Running seizure of death. Yeah, I always try to go for those um, random blocks that are just standing out in the middle of nowhere because I think it leads to a secret, but most of the time it's either a coin or just a broken block. And, I mean, these levels can get pretty short. As you see here, that was a rather quick level, which is why these, there's three, I showed three of the worlds here in the first part alone. This game is a very short game, even if you play through the entire thing. And would you look at that, more fireworks. And World 3-3, which is kind of like 1-3 in the fact that it's a, um, kind of like air level, where the fact there's a bunch of high platforms in the sky, there's a bunch of, um, Koopas and Goombas on them, and it's always red Goombas, not the green ones. And yeah, these are those little weighted, little weighted platforms that if you jump on one side, it causes the other one to go up and yours to go down. So you gotta be careful with your timing on those, otherwise you can fall off and die. I don't really have that problem here because I try to avoid them altogether because those are really difficult to get perfect timing on. And we're almost at the end of the part. This is going to be the final castle of this part. I believe it's here that I show off that um, these are actually fake Bowsers rather than the real ones. Because if you kill him with a fireball, it actually shows, like, the death sprite. It's like a Goomba. Gray one. And, yeah, more fire ropes here. You gotta be careful with those. But, I mean, these castle levels, they have a lot of traps, yes. But they are a lot shorter than the other levels, usually. Except for 8-4, but we'll get there when we get there. And I forgot to mention this already. You have a ducking animation, or just duck in general, which helps you avoid enemies. I see there, that was actually a Buzzy Beetle, not a Goomba. I don't know why I thought it was a Goomba. But yeah, you kill that, the, um, if you touch the axe, the bridge doesn't fall down. But, you still won the level. And look at that, three toads this time instead of the two. Well, that does it for this part. This is New Age Classic Gamer signing off. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, subscribe, whatever. See ya.